Wow. Uh, I don't even know where to begin for this uh, review. I am speechless. I literally just left the theater not even an hour ago, and my mind is just blown. I have so much that I want to talk about, but I want to make sure that I talk about it in an organized way because this movie deserves a great review. And I went in a little bit nervous because I tried to never read reviews or know anything about a movie, especially a movie that I really want to see. And this is by far the movie from this Marvel phase that I was looking forward to the most because I am a huge, huge Wanda fan. Um, she's everything that I want in uh, the Marvel uh, MCU uh, storyline. So I was a little bit nervous because I read some some headlines. I didn't go for the full review, but some headlines that made me nervous about the movie. But still, I left the theater so happy because so much of what happened is what I wanted to see. But um, let's first start with a little bit about what the movie is and... It basically starts with America Chavez, a new character being introduced, who can travel through the multiverse with her powers, and she is being chased by some sort of demon or someone because they want to steal her power, which will ultimately kill her as well as destroy many other worlds if it falls under the wrong hands. Uh, in almost every world, uh, that she travels to she is helped by dr. Strange and one of them even tries to kill her because he thinks he is more powerful than she is and can handle that power better and protect it okay so the first thing I want to say is that this movie gave me everything and more that I wanted to see from the moment it starts right out of the gate and it starts in the middle of a battle sequence it never lets loose maybe for about i would say 10 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes after the first 35 minutes of the movie it slowed down it slows down a bit to uh build the relationships between doc our dr strange and america chavez and to move the story forward for certain characters like obviously wanda and to see where these people have been uh since we last saw them but after that it is non-stop i would say the last hour hour and 15 minutes it is full throttle it just goes you know ballistic it's non-stop roller coaster ride so i want to also start with by saying that i was a little bit nervous and i have to admit about sam raimi being the director for this movie only because his work lately hasn't lived up to his past work but i can honestly say his material or i'm sorry this material is right up his alley and he delivered a fantastic blend of superhero and horror which is what he's known for and when i say horror i mean it is horror this is not a kids movie parents beware there's plenty of deaths and kills to go around and a lot of them were shocking truly shocking and bloody and scary uh not just because and not shocking only because of who dies but the way that they do it's gruesome and not very marvel or disney like they push the envelope and i'm surprised that disney who owns marvel allowed it but it makes for some great entertainment so what did i like about the movie well for starters all the characters strange wanda america wong and all of the cameos that appear and there's a lot of cameos and characters that i was not expecting that i think some of you are not expecting they were really fun to see everybody cheered in the theater when these people came out um all of them are at the peak of their powers like omega level height of powers that make for some great action sequences with great cgi that delivered for me for what i wanted to see and the best way i can explain that at least how i explain it to myself is if i go back to the harry potter movies right 
during all the movies, you know, they always did magic and they did some cool stuff, but it wasn't until the Order of the Phoenix at the end where you see um, Dumbledore versus Voldemort and they really showcase what their powers can do at the end of that movie. And we never see it again, at least for me. The movies that followed ne were never able to showcase the powers as they did in the Order of the Phoenix. So I think in this movie, in the Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange and Wanda are at such height of powers and abilities that this is the movie that really showcases what they can do. And that's what I wanted to see. And I don't want a few quick seconds here and there. No, I want a good few minutes of them fighting and, you know, going at it against each other or other characters with their powers. And f this movie really gave me that. All right, so let's organize things by character from here on. And I will be talking spoilers because I can't control myself, so I'm warning you. Um, so let's start with Wanda because she really is the reason why I wanted to see this movie from the beginning, right? So um, I'll just say it, you know, how it is. She is the main villain in the movie. I thought that maybe there would be a primary uh, type boss villain who makes her do questionable things and that somehow she finds her way back to being good throughout the movie. But that never happened. She is the villain and the only villain. Now, I do know that the movie went through a lot of reshoots. So I have a feeling that the earlier scenes are those reshoots that took place and that her first scene might be one of those because in that scene she's talking to Doctor Strange and she's supposed to be in, in a happy place but she by accident says something that he realizes you're not supposed to know that and she looks at him well it's because I'm the villain. And it happens so quick and out of nowhere that we learn that she is the one trying to capture America because she's obsessed with wanting to find her boys. And that happens so fast that it's like, oh, uh, oh, okay. So we're not catching up with her after WandaVision. She is literally already um, taken by the Darkhold and she is bad already. And the reason why she wants America is because she wants to steal America's powers so that she can travel the multiverse by herself and find a world where she can be with her boys since she loves them and misses them so much. So her downfall happened really quickly uh, and out of nowhere. And our Wanda is not really there anymore. Okay. Now, Elizabeth Olsen deserves a standing ovation for how dark and how mad she went for this evil Wanda Scarlet Witch. Um, I love how she has mastered her physical performances of Wanda, of her powers with her hands. Her movements are like so well choreographed. It's like a beautiful fluid dance. So every time she's on screen, her acting is amazing and the way she performs Wanda's powers it's just beautiful to watch obviously maybe I'm biased because I love Wanda so much but I will say that this movie really feels like it's her movie because it all revolves around her story and her journey she is the one who sets this story in motion and every character's stories are going forward because of her Okay, so it feels more like a sequel to WandaVision than a sequel to Doctor Strange. But I'll get to that uh, a little bit later with Doctor Strange. Now, with that said, the one negative thing I didn't like was how the movie disregarded the accounts of WandaVision a little bit. In the sense that even though we saw her use the Darkhold, in the end credit scene of WandaVision, we never see a slow decline of her mental state. The movie starts and right off the bat in her first scene, she is the villain. There's no catching up with her or a way to see her uh, living a normal life and happy after leaving Westview. She is Scarlet Witch, evil from the get-go. Uh, there's also no vision. They do mention him, but I think it was a missed opportunity uh, that would have given us a more profound meaning to her story and her actions. 
And as we know, white vision is still out there somewhere, and he has all of vision's data. So what's going to happen with that, you know? And the reason why I have that question is because in the end of the movie, Wanda dies. She realizes what she was doing uh, will never give her the satisfaction uh, to be with her boys. And even if she goes to another universe, those boys will not recognize her as their mom. They're going to recognize the Wanda of that universe. So ultimately, she sees what she's doing is wrong and she sacrifices herself. So what does this mean, right? Is Wanda done? Will we see her? Will she return? Will we see her again? What's going to happen with her voice? Will we ever get to see Billy and Tommy grow up to be Wiccan and Speed? Will White Vision ever return? You know, there's so much left to be said for this story. So I really want to know uh, if this really is the end. So also, after her actions in this movie... She killed a lot of people, and those actions will have severe consequences in the multiverse. It is impossible to redeem her from here on. So I'm very curious to know what will be of Wanda and the Scarlet Witch that we love so much after this movie. So let's move on to Doctor Strange. Uh, Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch, I can never get his name right, <laughs> is so good. Uh, just like Elizabeth Olsen with Wanda, he has such a good understanding of Doctor Strange and also his physical uh, performance of the way he does, you know, all of his powers. He just has it down to a T, okay? So it's, he's always great to watch the entire movie. He is spot on. He doesn't fail. Now, even though I told you that it feels like this movie is a sequel to WandaVision, the movie centers on him trying to save the multiverse. The multiverse. Uh, we get to see different variants of Doctor Strange. We see Defender Strange. We see Darkhold Strange. And we see Zombie Strange. And he was fun in all those variations, and each of those had memorable, memorable moments, and my favorite was Zombie Strange, and his sequence is so Sam Raimi, from the horror mixed with humor elements, uh, it's really fun, and he comes pretty much at the end of the movie, and that's, that was my favorite variant to see of him. Now, the one thing that I did not like about Doctor Strange and why I say it doesn't feel like a sequel to his first movie is because there wasn't a deep dive into his story or emotional state. The movie does try to imply that he is struggling with whether or not he made the right choice in Endgame. If that really was the only play when he gave the Time Stone to Thanos... Because even though they won, a lot of civilians still lost loved ones. Um, so that struggle, uh, we see it in a scene in the, in the beginning uh, moments of the movie. But it was very brief. And I think that is an interesting topic to explore. Because even though they won and he came back and a lot of the superheroes came back and millions of people came back. You know, some didn't, and some people did die uh, in the battles. And that is talked about briefly, and I think that would have been better in a larger scale. But again, the movie is only two hours, and there's a lot going on. So I can understand it, but since it is his movie, I feel like there should have been a little bit more of that emotional dive into his uh, state of mind. What they did explore, though, uh, was his love with Christine, and they do a really good job there. Uh, some very heartwarming moments, and they did an, an especially good job in giving Christine a lot of scenes, and Rachel McAdams never fails. I mean, she's great. I love her to death. Uh, in fact, I loved her more in this movie than in the first Doctor Strange, and I want more of her in the future. Will we get that? I don't know, but I hope we do. Now, as far as Doctor Strange's uh, story in the end of the movie, 
Uh, he does end up using the Darkhold in order to fight against Wanda. But he uses a different version of the book in a different multiverse, which they kind of also imply that in each multiverse or in each world, the Darkhold might be a little bit different. So will this Darkhold have a big effect on him? Will it make him go dark and evil as much as the one that Wanda has? I don't know. However, uh, the movie does end with a cliffhanger, but it is a horror-style cliffhanger that is very much a signature of Sam Raimi's uh, horror movies. So I don't know if that cliffhanger is real or if it's just a dream to scare us. So now for America Chavez. Uh, she was a good addition to this movie. I really I really enjoyed her. She held her own. Uh, Xochitl Gomez was very decent. That's the actress who plays America. I love that she is a Latina. And her first lines in the movie, actually the first lines in the movie, are hers speaking Spanish. And I have to admit I love that because it is good for uh, representation and because Latinos love Marvel movies, they show up and they need someone to root for that they can relate to. So that was great to see her, uh, that the movie opened up with her speaking Spanish. Um, she also wears an uh, LGBTQ plus pin on her jacket during the movie. And I think everyone thought that she was going to be the first openly gay MCU character. And I saw that in headlines throughout the last year. Um, but then, well, we never actually uh, actually saw that. Nobody ever said that she was uh, gay or, or bisexual or, or anything representing the LGBTQ. Uh, they do show that she has two moms who she accidentally teleported to another world. So at least some points there for Marvel for doing that. Although I would rather it be her that actually is from the LGBTQ community. Because she's the one that we're going to see the most in movies or TV shows. Now. I do like the idea of her, of her and her powers, and I can see in the future that Marvel can make some good stories from her power set. However, Gomez did not thrill me that much in her performance, but I will say this. Uh, now that she is getting control of her powers and she's learning how to use them better, I think she is a better fit for a Disney Plus show rather than a huge Marvel movie. But again, I used to say the same thing about other actors, and then they grew on me. Uh, so, you know, to be determined. But I do want to see her more. Like I said, a Disney show where she tries to go find her mothers in the multiverse. That would be super fun. So, all in all, I had a blast in one of Marvel's most ambitious films since Infinity War and Endgame. It does have its flaws, but for true Marvel fans, this movie gives us exactly what we wanted, at least to me. So now I will leave you with some questions. Feel free to answer them on the comments below. So did you like the movie? What did you think of Wanda's story and how they handled it? Do you think she will be back? What was your favorite part of the movie? Favorite action sequence? Did you like newcomer America Chavez? And do you think the cliffhanger at the end with Doctor Strange is real or is it a dream? All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm Frank Javier, and I'm signing off.